Hey fam, I want you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin, and don't forget to turn on your notifications. Yesterday in Minneapolis, Mohamed Noor, a police officer, was found guilty of third-degree manslaughter for the shooting death of Justine uh, Damon Rusick. Took, took place July 15, 2017. And the reason why uh, this is controversial for lots of folks is that the officer who shot and killed Philando Castile, remember, he wasn't even charged in that case. And folks are saying, oh, so when you have black cop kills white woman, then you have justice. But when you have white cops who kill black folks, no justice. That's what folks in Minneapolis are talking about. The question is, are they right? Joining us right now is a Minneapolis activist and attorney, Nakima Levy Armstrong. Uh, normally, y'all know about Nakima, Le Nakima Levy Pounds, uh, but uh, she since uh, got married. Nakima, how you doing? I'm good, Roland. How are you? Uh, doing great. Uh, I take it you're there at a protest right now in Minneapolis? Yes, I am. The protest will be uh, underway soon. I'm going to try to get you a shot of the people assembling. Um, there's a Justice for Justine Committee, which consists of uh, Justine Damon's friends and uh, neighbors who have been standing up for justice for her since she was killed. So they organized today's rally and they invited African-American um, activists and other activists of color to stand in solidarity with them. So what are they actually protesting? Because the officer, he's been found guilty. Yes, he was found guilty, which was unprecedented in the state of Minnesota for an officer to be convicted of murdering a civilian while on duty. And one of the interesting things about this case is the fact that we have white allies, such as the people who knew Justine, who are still calling out the racial inequities and inequalities within the justice system. And they agree with us that there is really no just outcome in this situation because white officers who kill people are still allowed to do so with impunity. The verdict in this case sent a message to black officers that they will be treated like suspects and criminals and not given the same amount of deference that white officers are given when they claim that they feared for their safety. So I've been really impressed by this group of people who are calling out the racial injustices within the system while also demanding accountability for the life of Justine Damon. And, uh, you know, what is stunning here, again, first of all, I've read many counts. People say that this was uh, the just verdict, those of us who believe in justice, when you have these police officers who do, do wrongdoing. But again, to sit here and, and to realize that uh, what happened with this cop, it sort of reminds me uh, when you had the Asian cop in Brooklyn who shot and killed an African-American who was also found uh, guilty, even though the sentencing uh, was a joke there. Uh, yet, again, folks are saying, rarely will you see a white cop who is involved in this where something is happening. And in fact, if I'm correct with this officer here, that the fraternal order police, they weren't even backing this guy. Right. The uh, police federation normally comes out and makes a statement strongly in support of officers who kill people. And in this case, they largely remain silent. Um, now, we have had trouble with the police federation for several years, uh, especially the leader, Bob Prohl, who has his own, own history of using excessive force against civilians and particularly against African-American men. He has dozens of counts against him. So we're not surprised when he defends officers who engage in misconduct, who engage in violence. But in this instance, for once, he decided to remain silent while this officer had to face the justice system. And so once again, it's another example of uneven justice when there is a black officer who has been accused of wrongdoing. I do not feel that a just outcome was possible in this case because again, white officers are allowed to kill with impunity. So we don't feel safe. Most of the murders that have been committed by police officers have been committed by white male police officers who have not been held accountable. Many of them still have their jobs, still collecting a pension, still collecting a paycheck and um, are still patrolling the streets. So we don't feel safe, and, and this verdict does not make us feel safe. All right, then. Well, Nakima, we certainly appreciate uh, your activism. Thank you so very much.
Thanks for having me. All right. We're going to go to uh, my panel here. Dr. Cleo Monago, social political analyst and activist, joining me via uh, Skype. Alexis Green, spoken word artist, and Eugene Craig, a CEO of the Eugene Craig organization. Cleo, I'll start with you. Uh, and this is one of those th situations where people actually are confused. Because they'll say, well, you know, why are you complaining? The officer was, was found uh, guilty because the reality is, what does this officer look like? Yeah, she just raised the issue. I mean, the issue was that, as she already said, that white people aren't treated like this, white cops aren't treated like this. I didn't know all the details until just now in terms of more of the nuances. And it's interesting that with the brother cop who did this killing, did not get any support from his peers. I'm wondering if um, Diamond's family has that as part of their analysis or their support today while they're having this rally. They, they also understand that the, the black cop who was found guilty might be a victim of racism. I'm just wondering if they're considering that as well, while they're standing in solidarity on the issue of police brutality in general. But yeah, I mean, this is pretty much a norm among police systems in this country. When black people are up for grabs, they don't get as much support as the white cops who have done most of the murders. It's pretty much the way it is. Uh, Eugene, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, look, the thing is this. Um, a cop kills somebody, the cops should deal with the consequences as if, as if there was someone else, uh, that, as if they were a normal human being, if they're a normal American citizen. Um, I do think there is a nuance here of race. Um, the guy, the cop is black, the guy, the cop is Muslim. And I think that probably did play a factor in his, convic his conviction. Um, but I do think there's two things we should point out. Uh, the family and friends of Justine, um, they are using this as a platform to help elevate the situation of black Americans, black and brown folk that are killed by white cops and uh, standing in solidarity. And the second thing is this. Um, this issue isn't necessarily a black and white issue, and that can go either way. This is a blue versus everybody issue. Um, and, this, and the issue is that this particular cop, he you know, uh, looks to be Somali uh, uh, and Muslim, uh, he deployed the same training and, uh, and situational awareness that the white cops use. And it just happened that he uh, was convicted. But it's not a blue versus everybody issue because the blue people backed off from the black person in this instance. Well, I guess he would be considered part of everybody in this particular case. Alexis, go ahead. See, for me, I think, well, for one, I want to start off by saying, um, in an effort to highlight the unity or the opportunity for unity in this moment, I think that it's remarkable that the white people who are um, grieving over Justine's death um, can even take this moment of, of grief and this moment of, you know, getting a, a conviction, like she actually got justice, and still use this opportunity to highlight Black Lives Matter issues and the issues with um, injustice for Black people who end up in the same situation as Justine. So I do think, like, I, we have to give credit where credit is due. Because they didn't have to do that. They could just say, you know, we, we got our justice and let's just move on with our with our own business, but like they took that moment to highlight other issues within other communities. So I have to give credit where credit's due on that. The second thing I would say is that when it comes to, uh, you know, if this was a white cop and a black person was a victim, it would be handled differently. We've seen that time and time again. So by no means am I saying that a black officer should get away with killing a white person. I'm saying that any cop who kills an innocent person, whether they're black, white, blue, brown, whatever, they should be convicted. So it doesn't matter what race the cop is. It's just a matter of if there should be justice for all, justice for Justine as a white woman, but also for everyone else as black people, brown people, or whatever color people. Absolutely. Well, so good. It comes down to simple justice and what it boils down to. Support Roller March Unfiltered. Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. Dot com.